The first time you ever went to the gym, what did you do? Almost certainly, it was three sets of 10. But do you even know where this comes from? And is it even effective or necessary? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna go over the history of where three sets of 10 actually comes from and whether or not it's effective or if you should even be doing three sets of 10. What's up guys, Jay Vincent here. And in today's video, we're going over three sets of 10. Most of you probably still do three sets of 10 and almost certainly have done three sets of 10 of strength training exercise at some point in your life. But do you even know where this comes from? Why three? Why 10? Well, believe it or not, this comes from something called the Delorme Watkins Protocol. Thomas Delorme was a physician in the army in the 1940s. And he believed, due to his own experiments and his own anecdotal results, that strength training could be used to rehab most injuries in the joints that World War II soldiers were suffering in combat. Previously, the physical therapy protocols suggested lightweight or almost no weight and avoiding muscle exhaustion during their rehab protocols. Now, back when he was younger, he was diagnosed with rheumatic fever, which was very popular in the early 1900s, and the doctor suggested that he stay in bed and avoid any strenuous activity. Well, Thomas DeLorme intuitively believed that strength training would actually help him overcome his illness. So as soon as he started to feel better, against the doctor's advice, Thomas DeLorme engaged in what he called heavy resistance training and combated most of the side effects and the huge amount of muscle loss that he experienced from rheumatic fever. So since then, from that very moment, Thomas DeLorme was a weight training enthusiast and advocate. And when he reached the army, he believed that a lot of these injuries that these World War II soldiers were suffering from, that were taking way too long to recover from, could be cured and the rehab accelerated with what he called heavy resistance training, completely against the grain of what physical therapists were suggesting at the time. Again, at the time, it was believed that anything above moderate muscle fatigue was bad for the heart and dangerous for individuals. But Thomas DeLorme knew this to be false. So he began experimenting with leg extension exercise on injured knees. And what he found was the rehab was drastically accelerated. And some of his patients who were told that would never even really be back to normal again, were running within just a few short weeks. And by 1945, after the huge amount of success Thomas DeLorme had with his patients, most of the army was prescribed heavy resistance training as a rehab protocol. Now again, since they were working with wounded individuals, people with joint injuries, Thomas DeLorme suggested three sets. The first two being warm-ups. The first set was 50% of the working load used as a warm-up, 10 repetitions to help the individual get a feel for the exercise and warm up adequately. The second set was a little bit heavier, 75% of the working load done as a second warm-up. Now the third set was done with 100% of the working load to failure. And this was referred to as the stimulation set, the set that actually stimulated an improvement in muscle growth and strength. So this is where the three sets of 10 comes from. The first two sets were designated warm-up sets since Thomas DeLorme was working with injured individuals. It was only the third set, which Thomas DeLorme knew to be the set to stimulate improvements in muscle growth and strength that was done to failure with 100% of the working load. Now, what most people are doing today is just randomly three sets of 10, mostly none of them going to failure, which is going to be relatively ineffective. And in some cases, all of them going to failure, which is going to be way more than you need and usually result in overtraining. But the reality is you don't even need the first two warm-up sets. You only really need one relatively extended duration working set all the way to muscle failure. Now, if you're doing the sets with proper form, 
slow and controlled, there really doesn't seem to be a need for a warm-up set. A warm-up set usually is required with sloppy, jerky, horrible form like most people are performing in the gym. But if you perform these exercises the way I demonstrate in goldenerasystem.com, a warm-up set is gonna be relatively useless. And based on the majority of the exercise literature, there seems to be no difference in strength improvements and improvements in muscle size between one and three sets. Research done by Starkey, research done by Bataro, and other research shows that a comparison between one and three sets performed to deep muscle fatigue and preferably failure elicit same responses and the same improvements in muscular strength and muscular size. So in many cases, if you're doing three sets, you're doing something wrong. If you're doing three sets with none of them as a working set performed all the way to the deepest level of muscle fatigue or muscle failure, you're really not stimulating anything. And if you're doing three sets all to failure, what you're generally doing is just producing more inflammation and more stress with no additional stimulus. So you don't need to be doing three sets of 10. Really, what you need to be doing is just one all-out controlled set all the way to muscle failure or at minimum as close as you get. So all you really need to be doing is just one working set to muscle failure preferably or as close to muscle failure as you can get using a load which allows the set duration to be anywhere from 30 to 120 seconds. There doesn't seem to be any need to break up this volume into three sets. And if you look at it from a logical perspective, why would you break it up into three sets? It simply doesn't really make any sense. And the majority of literature done comparing one and three sets shows that the results are exactly the same if you are carrying the sets to a deep level of muscle fatigue. Now it's going to be tough to combat the conditioning and the belief system that most people have about resistance training but the reality is this belief system has no evidence and no logical basis behind it. So if you wanna save time, save your joints, and still get the same, if not in many cases, better results in the gym by pushing your body harder with just one set for each major muscle group, go to goldenerasystem.com and learn how to do it. You guys need to remember that when it comes to exercise, more is not better. The purpose of a workout is to address every major muscle group, recruit and stimulate as many motor units as possible, and thereby muscle fibers as possible to stimulate an anabolic hypertrophic response. This can and should be done in one efficient, high intensity set. Muscle fibers are not recruited based on angles or exercise type or volume. The amount of muscle fiber is recruited based on the intensity of the muscular contraction or intensity of effort. And this can and should be accomplished in just one set. Once you have reached the highest threshold motor units and recruited them with a high intensity of effort, going close to failure, preferably to failure, the stimulus has been activated. The button has been turned on. You cannot do another set to muscle failure or close to muscle failure and turn these motor units back on for stimulation. That's not how the body works. So in many cases, people are doing way more than is necessary. And if they're not training hard, they're not doing nearly enough intensity of effort to actually stimulate the body to change. A good analogy I like to use when it comes to one versus three sets is think about washing a dish. Well, you could wash the dish good once and the dish is clean. Washing it an additional two times is not going to make the dish any cleaner if you do it correctly the first time. What most people are doing in the gym is like taking a dish and washing it three times because they're afraid that washing it the first time didn't get the job done, but it does. Most of the time, you guys are wasting precious, valuable time just repeating the exercise over and over again with no additional benefit. And this has led to a problem in the fitness industry. The belief that most people need to be in the gym for an hour or an hour and a half, six days a week, most people are not able to accommodate that. And as a result, most people just don't go to the gym at all. So what we're left with is a population of people who are obese, disease-ridden, lazy, low energy, messed up hormones, and this is pretty much due to the belief that you need to be in the gym all the damn time. But I'm telling you, based on the research, based on me supervising over 20,000 sessions, you absolutely do 
not if you do it this way. Go to goldenerasystem.com, try my workout program, which is going to show you exactly how to safely, efficiently, and effectively stimulate all the major muscle groups in your body with just a couple of 30 minute to 40 minute workouts per week. You're going to get way better results, save a ton of time, and save your joints in the process. And the best part is, if you're training really hard, as the way the Golden Era system outlines, you do not need additional cardio. No cardio required. So go to goldenerasystem.com and try this program, and I promise you'll see way better results. And if you want to work with me personally, click the link in the description below and book a free 30-minute call with me so I can coach you directly on these concepts and other exercise science concepts, which will give you the best physique you have ever had in your entire life in just three short months. Go ahead, click those links in the description below. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe and bell notification icon so you can be notified when I drop more evidence-based exercise information.